Oh, man. We are live, and I am heavily caffeinated. It is Saturday morning here, but our guest is in Germany, and it is evening there. I am your host, Daniel Crozier. This is Kofo Live and Undead, and I am here with Lucia Cifarelli of KMFDM. Holy shit! Lucia, how are you? I am well. Thank you for having me. Oh, thanks for coming on. I, I know it's 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 getting a little late in uh, in Germany. Uh, yeah, I think it's what seven o'clock up there. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. A later than it is by you. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh still. Still a little light outside, so that's that's good. Yeah, thanks for coming on the show. This is super exciting to have you. Absolutely, I'm I'm honored to be invited. Thank you. Oh, appreciate it. Uh, so, Lucia, uh, tell us a little bit about your 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 backstory and uh, how you got into music. I have always loved music. I was singing into a hairbrush when I was you know four or five years old, listening to all the records that my older brother and sisters were playing. Um, I come from a big Italian American family and there's always been music in the house. My father loved to sing. My grandmother sang in the opera and in church. And um, you know, there was always music around. It was always a part of our life. And um, I got the bug early and I just, I guess I, I decided when it was quite obvious that I didn't really have any academic uh, gifts. <laughs> I know that feeling. Like, what the hell else am I going to do? Well, I love music. So um, I always love to write poetry and I love to sing. So I started taking voice lessons when I was in high school and junior high school in, in New York City. Right. And through my voice teacher, I started, you know, um, making contacts and then I interned at a recording studio in Long Island cool. called City Sound Studios and um, you know started meeting more people and then I started a band and graduated moved to New York City and then you know it just kept going and going and going until finally um, you know I had my band Drill and we got our first record deal yeah cool. Man, that's uh, that's cool. And uh, with with uh, drill, um, yeah, yeah. Here's uh, like one of the album covers. Uh, I, uh, how many albums did you guys end up putting out? Well, that was actually the only one that was official. The second yeah. one um, has never been released. I'm still trying to figure out a way to do that because it was technically we were supposed to release it on A and M, but shortly before the release. Mm -hmm. There was a huge record company merger and we got lost in the shuffle. They just, oh. you know, lots of people did and we got dropped. And that's actually when I moved into um, joining MDFMK. Okay. And later oh. segueing into KMFDM. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It, and uh, you know, your, your segue into KMFDM, that was around, uh, I think, 2002, right? A little earlier, well, first MDFMK, which was mm -hmm. around 2000, and then later into came out. Yeah, that, that's the, that's about right. Yeah. Okay, okay cool. Yeah, and, and you know, what, one of the reasons, I, yeah, I reached out and, and wanted to, you know, start, uh, you know, conversations with with you know, musicians is that awesome intersection of uh, you know music and horror. Uh, do you you know, what are the some of your uh, you know big uh, 
like uh, horror uh, film and, and music, uh, you know, influences? Well, the thing is, is like I have been influenced by horror my whole life in every way. I mean, when I was a kid, um, you know, I I think I think actually the very first horror film I ever saw was a, a 1970 film called Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. Oh, okay. Did you ever hear of that one? Yep, I know of that one. And Phantasm and all these kind of movies. Phantasm is awesome. Right? Oh, and I, so cool. You know, Rosemary's Baby and yes. Harry and The Shining. And, you know, this kind of um, the genre mm -hmm. really spoke to me because I was the kind of kid that I would think I was talking to ghosts at night. And I was, I was always speaking to, you know, the other side, wow. not specifically to angels, but I always felt like there was somebody else there. Yeah. And I didn't necessarily have an imaginary friend or anything, but I was definitely kind of so mesmerized by the films that I was watching at such a young age. I really absorbed it and took it in and um, started making up stories in my head. So whenever I approach a song, you know, the first thing that happens is I hear the music and that immediately gives me um, a sensation. Okay, well, what's the vibe of the song? Is it going to be, you know, is it something dark and creepy right. or something, um, you know, fast and kind of driving? But when it's the dark and creepy stuff, it I do tend to just fall into the story of something yeah. creepy. <laughs> it, it, it can be really enticing really inviting isn't it it is it is but it's not in a bad way i mean i i you know some people i think have this misperception that anything that's kind of dark or you know oh ooh, evil yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know some people don't like to look me in the eyes because they think oh yeah but it's it's just it's just another aspect of all of our personalities, right? We right. explore them, and right. much in the way that an actor embodies a character when they go into a film or on stage. Yeah. Right? True, yeah. The um, yeah, there's 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 something uh, I think really exhilarating, you know, with uh, like music in general, like yeah, you know, with he heavy metal, metal, you know, goth, industrial, uh, psychobilly. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. that really plays with uh, like, you know, the supernatural and the darkness and it's, you know, really um, exhilarating. Um, you know, do you find that, uh, you, know, you know, working with, uh, with the band with, uh, with KMFDM and, and uh, you know, previously with Drill, you know, you know that uh, it was exciting to kind of explore some of those themes? Mm -hmm. It's always exciting to explore those themes. Yeah. It always is because, you know, I, I have to draw the thread back to when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I mean, watching Halloween and yeah. Friday the 13th and The Omen and, you know, I think I said Rosemary's Baby, but there's so many more. I mean, I've got a list here of the movies that I've, you know, Frankenstein and Dracula, yeah. you know, these things were – some kids didn't want to watch them, but for me it felt – it felt like as natural, I was a duck to water. It just mm -hmm. spoke to me. It was my language. And I thought, this is so fascinating and scary, but cool. And I like it. And and I have this natural thing about me that is kind of creepy and scary. So <laughs> <laughs> I can be. Yeah. So it just, I really, I move with it. And um I, I just find it fascinating. And, and when I write I or when I'm on stage, I want to take on the personality of the song and yeah. create, bring it to life. I just love it. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the, I, I think there's that, that uh, you know, experience with you know, the search for the unknown and uh, also like with a lot of those characters too, they're kind of referred to as like the outsider, those just monsters of, of horror and stuff. And I, I think that speaks so well to uh, counterculture. 
Yeah, well, I've always felt that way. And yeah. I've always felt a little bit like a monster. Mm. Um, yeah. I, I, because, um, yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of reasons for that. There's all sorts of reasons why we feel different and like the outsider, whether you're not popular in high school or you're rejected by your family or you're abused mm -hmm. or this or that. These things ble bleed into the character that you become as you develop. And, um, you know, it is like a rebel attitude, but it's definitely all of these factor into feeling like an outsider for a lot of folks, myself included. Um, and I play on that. I play on those stereotypes because I understand them really well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I, um, uh, you know, playing off of that and like, you know, using a lot of those, those themes, um, I mean, it's, uh, it plays really well, I think, on on stage. You you see, you know. Well, we were talking earlier before we went live about uh, how you and, and Sasha, you know, look like uh, action figures and some of you know, um, you know, kind of larger in life on stage and also you know in in your uh, you know your your stage you know your garbs and everything. And uh, I, yeah, to me, it's 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 very I iconic. And at the same time, I, you know, I was I was thinking too. It's like, hey, these guys would, would make you know amazing you know characters in, in a horror movie or something. You know, like like your your Freddy, you know, your Freddy Krueger or your Jason Voorhees or you know uh, something you know uh, more sleek like your Dracula. You see Dracula re re envisioned every generation. You know, it's always funny. with a new look. <laughs> What's up? I'm sorry, I. Me. It should be me. I should be yeah. the next Dracula. I would love that. I I would agree. That would be us. Awesome. You guys are in Europe too. I mean, you know, uh, you know, Romania is not that far away. No, we haven't gotten there yet. You know, we're busy all the time. We're yeah. always making records. We're always making music. And cool. so, you know, I get to live in these creepy, strange places through the songs just about every day. And um, you know, it, it's. Everybody thinks because we live in Europe, oh, well, you can just go anywhere. Well, True. nobody can go anywhere right now, but. No. Not not with COVID. Yeah, how, how is, uh, you know, things in Germany with, uh, with the pandemic? I think we're not doing as well as some other countries with mm. the vaccine um, distribution. Okay. And, um, you know, we're, we're very fortunate to live in a, in a suburban area that's very beautiful. So we can go out and we can walk around and be surrounded by beautiful trees and forests. Um, but the supermarket, you know, is not interesting anymore. <laughs> it would be right. nice to, it would be nice to um, spend some time with friends. Yeah. Which, you know, we're not, we're not doing that. We're really, we're really trying to be strict about who we have contact with so that we don't get sick. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think that there's a vaccine here that's going to be distributed anytime soon. I think it's going to be a while. So, yeah. 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 My understanding here in the States was, was Germany, Germany had this, you know, pretty well on hand, but it doesn't sound like that's the case. Well, you know, there was the, the, um, the head of the EU in Belgium was in charge of the vaccine and mm -hmm. Look, in, in all due respect, everybody wants to make sure the vaccine's safe. So right. they wanted to go through all their protocols. But while they were doing that, the rest of the world was buying up the vaccines. Oh, you know, I see. So now that we have to wait for, you know, production. And Germany is a big country. So right. we have a lot of people and we don't have nearly what we need. But hopefully by summer... Yeah. God, I mean, it's like. I know. <laughs> Come on already. <laughs> Let's get the show on the road. It's gonna uh, take the time. Yeah, uh, I, I know. It's 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 incredibly frustrating. I I want to see you guys out on the road, and and you're also working on on your own uh, solo uh, album. Is that right? I have just completed it and I am 
really, really, um, I'm very excited. I never imagined that I would make another solo record in quite this way. So it, it feels like a huge milestone for me. Nice. C congrats on that. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, and I understand there's there's a lot of, uh, you know, kind of uh, horrific uh, elements and, uh, you know, that kind of played into that as well. Well, I wouldn't say so much horrific. I would say sure. more, um, you know, ghostly or, okay. or touching on you know, some some real out of this world stuff. I mm -hmm. I don't know what it was. It was it was. 2000, the winter of 2019. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I had just turned 50. Mm. So that's a real turning point in a person's life. And, and I think I arrived at this moment and I, I always thought that an opportunity would come along when I would be offered the opportunity to make another solo record. I'm, it's kind of delusional, but I actually thought that something would happen and um, the right circumstances would present themselves and I'd get the opportunity to do another one. But in late 2019, I came to the, I had the epiphany. I was like, it's not going to happen. You know, if it's ever going to happen, you're going to have to do it yourself. Yeah. And, I, and I was talking to a friend and she's um, she's really into um, you know tapping into the dark side and yeah. into witchcraft cool. and all this stuff. Not dark magic, but you know she likes the occult. And I don't dabble in it, but I always am fascinated by anything that has to do with the other side. I think right. it's, I think it's fascinating. And she said she knew somebody who was a psychic, and mm -hmm. um, that maybe I should speak with them. He was also an artist. And um, he said, I wanna make you something. I wanna make you a talisman. Cool. He said, I wanna make me a talisman. He's like, I really like you. I wanna make you a kind of talisman. So mm -hmm. I want you to just tell me a little bit about you. And, um, you know, what is the one thing you always wanted? I said, I, I'd really love to make another solo record. You know, I'd, I'd really love to finally make this record. I'd really love to see this happen. And he's like, okay, well, why do you think you deserve it? And I was mm. like, I've been working at it a really long time. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I've, been, I've been out there and doing all this stuff. And he was like, okay. And then he's like, well, I'm going to make it for you and I'll let you know when it's done. And I was like, okay. And, and we exchanged all of this via email and then some really weird shit started happening. Ooh. Really weird stuff. 24 hours after I spoke to him, I did something I never did before. Mm -hmm. I just opened my computer, turned on garage band and I started like putting music together. Nice. And I wrote the first song and it was like, about meeting somebody on the other side. But yep. I literally, I woke up out of a dead sleep and just started automatic doing it. Like I just started doing it. And then the next day, now I'm not a runner, okay? I'm not a runner at all. I don't yeah. run. Then the next day, um, I had my daughter needed something and I ran up the stairs and I ran down and you know, I usually, my legs get tired usually when I run up and down like five flights of stairs, but right. I was running up and down really easily. I was like, oh my God, I feel great. And as soon as I said that, a voice in my head said, now go run. And I mm. was like, what? And I put on my sneakers and I ran for like 90 minutes like I was 12 years old. Wow. wow. And, then, and then I came home and I wrote the second song. And then... Um, Man, that's amazing. And Sasha heard heard something playing, and he was like, "What is that?" I was like, "What's well, something I wrote?" And he was like, "Oh, what are you doing?" And I, automatically, it just fell out of my mouth, and I said, "I'm going to write my next record." And he was <laughs> cool. Like, well, if you're serious, I'll help you. 
Yes. And I said, okay. And, you know, we were scheduled to go on the road with ministry mm -hmm. for several runs over the spring and, and fall. But with COVID, that was all off. Yeah. And then, I mean, as devastating as that was and is for everybody on all their own personal levels, mm -hmm. it really opened a door for me to be able to focus on making the record. And um, so I did that. And, and over the course of making this record, so many odd, strange, beautiful things happened that left no doubt in my mind that, you know, we are living, we're, we're living side by side with like a whole other reality that we can't right. see, but is always there. And we can activate it if we, if we truly want to. So that just kind of made me want to watch everything on, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. everything. And I'm like, oh, you know, just uh, anything and everything having to do with the unknown, you know? Mm, right. Yeah. Right. That's, uh, that's pretty cool that, uh, you know, having all those experiences and also, you know, compelling you to, to make, you know, brand new art. I mean, that's, it, it sounds like it just, just started flowing, you know, like a faucet. That's awesome. It was, and it's really, it's like my musical autobiography. I mean, it's not everything. It doesn't cover everything, but mm -hmm. it was like, I fell down this metaphorical, um, you know, mm -hmm rabbit hole and caught these these parts of my life in a butterfly net and I was like oh that's a good song that's a good song I'm gonna write about this and that and this and that nice. and um, I hope that people don't only learn more about me but that they discover themselves in these songs too you know yeah. that, they find, that they find songs because I think it will connect with a lot of people yeah yeah most definitely oh that's that's wonderful uh we've got uh richard here he he's been chiming in uh looking for strange uh was uh was dark and creepy um <laughs> is, i think he's wondering if your uh, new album is uh, industrial horror punk no i wouldn't say that i think the, the the intention when i made this record was i wanted it to sound like a soundtrack I wanted um, to, cool. I wanted it, you know, for instance, I, um, I played a couple of things for Sasha that I really liked. And, and I said, I want it to feel like, you know, it, it could be a film. So right. it's got some pretty dramatic feelings throughout it, but I would definitely not say that it's specifically um, industrial at all. I think you would say more like if, um, you know, you know, Prometheus. Ooh, okay. You know, if you took like Prometheus and mixed it with Depeche Mode and mixed mm. it with like, um, oh, that's an exciting blend. You know, some people it's, 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 it's edgy yeah, and sexy and dark and yeah. cool. I would say it's probably more goth than it is industrial. Okay. Cool. You know, I wanted it to, I wanted people, no matter which song they were listening to, I wanted them to be able to move. Yeah. Ooh, nice. Did uh -huh. an EPM and dance in there. Yeah. But it's yeah. definitely dark. <laughs> it was yeah. definitely Good. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, dark is such a you know uh yeah a wonderful texture to to kind of have you know in in music the uh you know you were talking about uh you know goth yeah as as being a, a bit of an influence and, and you know describing your new album is that the uh you know i've i've traced some of the you know the roots of uh like goth and industrial and uh um some more melancholy you know uh, type, uh, you know, musical, uh, genres to, you know, well, I shouldn't say melancholy. That's, it's, that's just kind of a, uh, um, kind of a note, so, so to speak, but, uh, um, to, to such acts as, as like, you know, screaming Jay Hawkins back in the fifties and, and, you know, having that big stage presence, you know, and, 
Uh, also that, that sound, uh, I remember, you know, seeing, um, how they recorded, uh, I, I put a spell on you for the second time oh, and yeah. everybody just, yeah, that. <laughs> just getting blitz drunk and playing everything, you know, uh, in the moment, exuberant, you know, inebriated and, uh, just having a really good time. It didn't make, you know, much radio play, but it set the stage and the tone for everything else that, you know, that would come before it, or uh, come after it, I should say. Is, is that something like, uh, you know, with, with the stage presence and like kind of that grand guignol uh, style of, of uh, performance, is that, is that something that, uh, you know, you and KMFDM and, uh, um, you know, what you did with drill, uh, you ever consider, uh, you know, where those, uh, those roots come from? Well, for me, you know, I, I was somebody who came up a long time ago. So of course those are influences for me. And, you know, you can't see a show like Alice Cooper live or, you know, the sisters of mercy or any of these things that are so darkly, inspired you know or right. diamanda galaz i mean when i saw plague mass that was like a horror movie Ooh, nice that was that was heavy duty shit and yeah. um you know i come from a place that is completely uh influenced by performance art in a way because we didn't have a lot of the tools that people have now yeah. And the genre, you know, the themes and the genres and the trends that are happening now that are really in the forefront, um, in some respects, not you know, in some respects, yeah, they 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 make things easier in a way. Like, mm. you know, when I was coming up, for instance, you know, you didn't have all these filters and you didn't have all these things. You had to, you had to come up with everything really organically. Yeah. And so when I go on stage, I really approach it from an old school kind of perspective where mm -hmm. it's almost like performance art and it's very spontaneous. It's never choreographed. Yeah. And, uh, it changes from night to night depending on what happens before the show. <laughs> you know? So there's always another take on it. Right. It's it's spontaneous, mm -hmm. and um, you know we're like we aren't. I'm sure the other boys in the band don't feel this way, but for me, it feels like we're actors on a stage because whatever was happening earlier we bring it to the stage and we bounce and communicate off each other yeah. in all different ways and right. they all are whether they would knowingly admit it you know they're creepy they have mm -hmm. this thing about them that's really you know edgy and um we complement each other a great deal yeah, yeah. So it's it's a lot of fun, and the, and and putting on a costume to do that helps a lot because it just right. makes you embody a character. Yeah. And um, when I'm writing the songs by myself, you know, so I write with Sasha, but we don't actually do everything together. He'll give me music, and I'll go off on my own, and I'll write. Mm -hmm. And I I tend to really. Um, I become what I write in order to have the full experience. I have to become that character, you right. know, uh, I mean, whether it's professional killer or hello or any of these songs, you know, I imagine what it is to be those characters. And then when I take it to the stage, I want to make sure that I'm, I am that because how better to make somebody feel the song than to be the complete embodiment of it, even if it is Jeffrey Dahmer, you know? Right. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, yeah, even with Jeffrey Dahmer, uh, at least he had taste. 
That was a bad joke. That was a bad joke. <laughs> Terrible joke. <laughs> um, you, you, it's, I think it's really refreshing to, to hear that because, you know, as I said, you know, you're on stage and I think I saw you guys in 2002. I think uh, uh, 16 Volt uh, might have opened for you guys at, uh, at the, the Ogden here in Denver. Absolutely. And uh, incidentally, just uh, just down the street from uh, the the Wax Tracks, uh, you know, uh, record store. And I remember KMFDM was was on Wax Tracks label. I think that was based out of Chicago, absolutely, uh, in the U.S. And um, um, you know, it yeah, the live show for KMFDM. My take is, you know, it's so energized. It's uh, yeah, the the darkness and the melancholy is there, but at the same time, it's it's like heavy caffeinated dance party, and it is so fun. But you still got the you know the you know, the roughness and, and then the hardness and the edginess to it, and it's just a- absolutely exhilarating. So, in in hearing you uh, you know talk about um, how you you want to embody you know those songs. Do you find yourself on stage uh, like um, the, your um, your performance and 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 uh, you know character would change song to song? What usually happens is, and you know this is rolling back just a little bit before I get on the stage. I spend about two hours by myself getting mm-hmm. ready for the show, and I do that in order to completely separate myself from my normal reality. And I I put my makeup on, it's almost some kind of meditative thing. And when I go on the stage and I perform each song, as soon as we step on the stage, something changes. Yeah. You know, the energy changes. It's it's a look that you give everybody in the band, you know, a look. It's like, are we good? Are we ready? You good? And it's like, boom. Right. And every song does embody something different. And everybody knows that. It's like a, it's almost like a symbiotic unspoken thing mm. where every song has a different rhythm, a different theme. And you know, for me, especially as a singer or somebody who wrote this, a, a particular song, I'm aware of the, these changes in a different way than them because I, you know, from one song you're talking about something that's really politically driven, right. going to something that's really creepy and dark. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't necessarily feel melancholy in it. I, there's power. There's power. Right. There's not sadness in KMFDM. It's like power. Yeah. You know, whether it's and and that's the energy that you feel. Right. And then and then it's 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 an, a complete exchange. It's toggling between the audience and the stage, because when you feel what's coming from the audience, it just makes you feel so much more energized because KMFDM is very fortunate to have an audience that are so ready to have a good time. Right. <laughs> you know I mean, they don't stand there like. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, they get it's into it. Yep. Yep. I remember that you guys. Yeah, it it becomes very participatory, you know, between the two. It's it's almost yeah to me. It, it, it kind of reminds me of like a super organism where where all these factions are, you know, you know, interacting with with each other to to make you know something much bigger than than just what's on stage too. Yeah, well, we want people to feel things for themselves. We don't want yeah. them to go there and watch us. We want them to have the experience. Right, right. And, you know, we want them to feel something too. And uh, obviously that's probably what every musician or artist wants the listener or the participant to feel. But in our case, we do take it to the extreme because we're right. really, you know, we're really right up front. Right. Now, if if you don't mind, um, some, uh, you know, yeah, this is a little bit more uh, personal, but this goes back to to your early days. You know, probably around the time of drill or, or a little bit before that. Um, you your um, you had a sibling, your sister. She passed away. 
was was that a, a big motivator and inspiration for you to to get up there and and sing and perform? I was I was singing before she passed away. That long before she was actually the first person to believe in me. Oh, that's great. She, she was the very first person to believe in me, and she was. Um, I think she was probably the first person to really pique my curiosity about. Mm. You know, scary movies and esoteric. Oh, cool. Yeah. And one day she said to me, um, you should take voice lessons. And mm. she, she was always going into the city and there's a New York paper called The Village Voice. And I said, well, how do I decide? And she said, close your eyes, run your finger over the newspaper, mm. keep circling it, and then just stop on a name. Mm. And that name that I stopped on changed my life. That name that I stopped on was responsible for a whole group of people that would later be involved with the drill record. Nice. And I met that woman when I was 14. And oh, the, wow. cool. Yeah. And the truth is, I didn't actually really find my voice. I didn't become the artist that I was embarking on with drill until my sister died. Well, until she became sick and I had to, um, you know, my sister had HIV and mm. she was very ill and I was very close to her. And just through the process of having to care for her and see her deteriorate in that way, my whole perspective on life changed. Before that, I wasn't, I wasn't really, um, writing music that was that impactful, to be honest. And it's because of her illness that yeah. something shifted in me and I was able to find this voice, this this inner power. And it really came from my sister's illness and her love and her belief in me. So yeah, she played a really huge role um, in my journey. and. She's been gone a long time, but I do feel she's still with me and I still talk to her and feel her presence with me. So, and I believe in that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that's really powerful. Um, it's, it, it, it's, it's really good to, to be able to, you know, those that, that we love, you know, still feel their presence and their influence and, and know that, you know, no, no matter how long they're, they're gone, they're always, always there for you. Well, they totally are. And if you're the kind of person that believes in the in, in some kind of energy that exists after we die, and I'm not talking about, you know, angels sitting on a cloud, but right. I mean if you have if you have like a more broad understanding of things, whether that's correct or not, but in your mm -hmm. mind, um, you can really <laughs> get a sense that they're there if you if you try to connect and look for signs. You know, whenever I'm thinking of my sister, I'll find like an owl feather. If I'm walking around, I'll be like thinking of her and, and then there'll be a feather or a bird tapping on the window. And I believe in that. And even if some people find that silly, you know, it gives me comfort. So. Yeah. That's, that's great. Um, the, uh, you know, you know, even like with a, you know, horror genre, you, you have such stories like Franklin Frankenstein, you know, about, you know, kind of this misfit creation that was abandoned by its, you know, creator and uh, also plays into like such things as, you know, body horror and everything that, that move and, and make really compelling, you know, art, compelling stories, um, amazing, you know, relatable characters. Um, and, uh, and I, I think, uh, you know, that's that's where, like, feeling such things, uh, you know, can really propel uh, to, you know, to such a, a amazing uh, works of, of art and, you know, sharing in that human experience. Well, I have. I mean, I've shared things on this record that I've never shared before on my solo record ever. The stories that have happened to me that nobody knows and... Um, and there's no doubt about it that there are things that have happened to other people and feelings that people, uh, you know, other people have experienced. And you're absolutely right. It's through the 
I mean, look, you never want anything bad to happen to anybody, but bad shit happens to everybody. Yeah. I mean, that if you have breath in your body and it hasn't happened, it will because it's the nature of life. Things do happen to us. It's just the way it is. And we all process it in different ways right. and get through it in different ways. And for me, it's putting it into my art. And yeah. sometimes I turn it into like a creepy, scary song. And sometimes I... Um, in this case, on my solo record, I'm kind of working through it in a in a different way. It's still creepy, but it's not as um, the energy is different. You know, right. it, the energy is different. It's not terrifying. It's more, um, ooh, you know, it's more like a ghost story than a horror film. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's not a slasher flick. It's, it's <laughs> no, no, you're you're dealing with something, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's texturally, you know, um, yeah, outside of your your purview. Um, you know, the, with with ghost stories, there's there's that that haunt, like that the remnant of uh, something that's still there, whether it's an energy or, or something like that. Um, I, I think that's that's absolutely uh, really yeah cool, but also uh, oddly enough delightful too. Yeah, you know you can't be you can't be into horror movies and ghost stories without kind of trying to reach that place by yourself too, right? I mean, we all talk to you know, for instance, my sister. If I have the belief that I can reach her by talking to her then you have to believe, you know, if you're going to believe in a little bit, you got to believe in the whole thing, right? You got to believe that it's possible to, um, to make things happen, you know, through manifestation or um, through faith and just energy. Yeah. And I work with all of it in my, completely uneducated way because I'm, like I said, I'm always busy writing and there's always so much going on. So I use these, these tools on a very uh, limited basis because I'm not educated, but I believe that ghosts exist. I believe that, mm -hmm. that, you know, we're living side by side with the other, an alternate reality. And I think that um, there's so much power to be drawn from that and not like weird ooh stuff just like it's really cool it's it's yeah. if you, if you if you use it in a positive way and um you center your focus and you move in the direction you want to go you're moving with it and you're bringing it to you you know you're bringing towards you the manifestation of what you want right 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 oh yeah that's uh that's awesome you know it's uh what a great way to you know to, to bring that, uh, you know, positivity and, you know, yeah, use it as a, a motiv motivating force. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, Richard chimed in. Richard's a big fan, apparently. <laughs> I got to put my glasses on for this. Wait a minute. What's his yeah, name? That, that's awesome. I, I love the whole horror score idea. This is going back to your album, uh, making it a, a horror movie score of, uh, or influenced by that um the the soundtrack idea yeah uh, i love it uh when uh music reflects the feeling inside uh like if you take the the vocal off uh you can still get the theme of the story that's pretty insightful i think on this record that is particularly the case mm -hmm. because um when i was working with sasha on it i really wanted the music to reflect mm -hmm. the feeling of what i was talking about so um, I think he hit the nail right on the head. He's definitely going to feel what I wanted him to feel just simply by listening to the music. So, yeah. Yeah. You, you mentioned too, that, uh, a lot of, um, yeah, some of the visuals like with, uh, um, uh, Nosferatu here was a, a little bit of an influence on, on some of the album art. Is that right? Well, you know, it's interesting. I think, I think as I have told you, I'm exploring these different aspects of myself. I think um, 
part of it was when I embarked on the album and the feeling that meeting this guy, his name is James Morden. He's, he's yeah. a really incredible artist and psychic. And, you know, right. I, I think he's a, a weird a wizard witch himself. Oh, cool. Yeah. And, um, and after all these weird things started happening to me and I was writing in this, I started to feel really empowered. Mm. Not that I felt like a vampire, like Nosferatu. Yeah. I started to take on a different energy, like, wow, if I really put my mind to something, if I really want this, mm. I'm I don't know if he's helping me manifest this with his talents and his energy or if I'm doing this on my own, but there's something really powerful about that. And so when I went to shoot the album artwork, I felt like my mannerisms were completely different. And mm. then when I saw the photos, Sasha was like, that looks like Nosferatu. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I'm a, I'm a vampire. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just felt really charged. I felt right. Because for so much of my life, I didn't have a lot of confidence. Mm. I was a, my, me and my sister and, and my sisters and brothers were subject to child abuse from the earliest possible age. Mm. And, yeah, and, you know, we all suffered from that in various ways. Mm. And I had a real lack of confidence. Everything felt really stuck. I wanted to be a singer. I wanted to do these things, but I was so you know, closed off and insecure that it took me a really long time to develop my confidence. And, um, you know, it was because of my sister and her passing that I unleashed it. And it's through the years of working with KMFDM and particularly Sasha, who's a big fan of my writing, who's encouraged me and supported what I do, what I bring to it. And, um, you know, I, I've just kind of really developed as a result of being with the band. And um, I've, I've had the freedom to explore all the creepy aspects of my personality, the embodiment of all of these outsider, you know, aspects that you speak of from that, that make people feel like outsiders, you know, whether they were bullied or they were the bully or they were abused or they were you know, this or that. I've taken all these experiences and I've made it into my art. I've yeah. put it into my art because that's the way for me to connect with the world, you know? Right. Now, it's it's it's, it's always interesting to, to hear these stories about, you know, how people, you know, take, uh, you know, tragedies and, and you know, personal uh, things uh, like that and uh, to make it very, you know, transformative and uh, ex express it, you know, through through art. That that happens a lot, you know. You find in in uh, so many different uh, horror stories over the years, and um, you, you know, you, you see you see like uh, especially in uh, in movies, you know, the clear character arc where they start out at one point and going through hell and back. They're incredibly transformative. Mm -hmm. um, they're, um, I think. Uh, like one of the more obvious ones that come to mind and it's really campy and cheesy is the evil dead movies. Oh, yeah. I love those. <laughs> I love them. Yeah. yeah, I know me, uh, me too. And, and even like uh, Ash versus the evil dead, but mm -hmm. you you've got something, you know, as, as simple as, as Ash as basically, you know, just this bro who's, you know, him and his friends go, go to the, the, the haunted cabin. They find a book, they unleash hell he's the only one that survives and, and uh, he's clearly somebody completely different by the end of it, especially with episode with uh, uh, evil dead Two, where he's lost his hand and now he's got a chainsaw for a hand <laughs> quite literally transformative. That's almost not even metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, you gotta, I mean, there's a lot of parallels exactly hit the nail on the head between these character arcs that you see in, in, in specifically horror movies, not just, but you know, that's right. what we're talking about and that's what right. we're resonating with and in real life. And, um, I mean, I, on the first single that I have on the record, which is 
it's, I, I don't want to tell you the title or anything because I'm not supposed to give too much away, but it's actually a song that's going to make people feel really good. But the undercurrent of the lyric really is about this kind of dark undercurrent of, um, you know, how we, how being different in these aspects, you know, isn't it, we all have them. Right. We all have them. The, the idea of feeling like an outsider, I think just about everybody feels like an outsider for one reason or another. Right. You know, even the people that are supposedly accepted and popular and this or that behind closed doors, I'm sure they have their issues too. You know, there's so much more that connects us in these ways. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm not trying to suggest that because of my experience, I'm somehow, I have a better understanding of being different than anybody else because I think everybody feels different, you know? Right, right. But, uh, most definitely. The, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's the beauty of music. That's the beauty of art. You know, you get to, you know, you get to share that, convey that. And yeah, everybody's going to, at some point in their life, you know, they, they feel like the outsider. Um, yeah. Just hopefully they have enough, yeah, in that moment, they have enough uh, uh, in, uh, introspection to, you know, be able to, to share that with, with everybody and, and convey that. So many people don't. And well, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to, I'm trying to show people that if I can do it, then they can do it because I was the girl voted most likely to fail mm. you know, by everybody that I know. So yeah. If I can do this. If I can, if I can, and what am I, what have I done? If I, I've just done what I set out to do and that's basically it, but that's an achievement in itself. And, and I want, you know, I'm an underdog and I want to um, give somebody else an opportunity to be like, well, if she can do it, hell yeah, I can do it too. You know, if she, if she could feel this way about herself as a result of going through this and that, and she could like pull herself up, she, I can do it too. So I just want to give people some, some kind of courage and maybe the way that I do it is a bit odd and doesn't look the same way as people that are more mainstream than me. But I think my kind of uh, aesthetic really reflects a lot of people out there because I think there's a lot of people that have like a fascination with the occult or horror movies. Mm -hmm things like this and they relate to the subject matter and themes. So I, I think, I, I think that's, I think you're absolutely right. I think that's a lot of people out there. Um, uh, Richard chimed in again. Uh, you didn't need one there, Richard. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's, he, I got these guys on their live show. Uh, it's like seeing, I think he's describing KMFDM. It's like seeing uh, Alice Cooper show that uh, uh, Andrew Eldrick uh, wrote after drinking with uh, Wes Craven and watching German expressionists and films. I, I really like that description. That's why, because I love Andrew Eldridge. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bravo. I like yeah. that. Thank uh, you, Richard. You're the only guy on the show. <laughs> oh, well, Sean just chimed in and said that uh, he caught uh, KMFDM at, the, at a dive bar in Jacksonville named The Milk Bar in 99. It was a great show. Oh my God! Wow. So, well, and you know, Sasha goes back a, a long, long ways. I wonder if he's a vampire because he—that guy doesn't age. Your husband doesn't seem to, you know, short. Doesn't seem to lose any energy, and neither do you. No, he's um, he's completely opposite to me. He he really is, but we complement each other really well. And he's somebody who, you know, he the secret to life is doing what you love. That really is. I mean, if you want to be happy in this world, you got to do what you love. And he was supported on that. He yeah. didn't have parents that told him to become a banker or no disrespect to bankers, but you know, he wasn't like pushed in any direction. He was completely uh, just told to do what he loved in a lot of ways. And he did, and he does it every single day of his life. And that makes him happy. And, and he sometimes stays up all night making music. And, you know, there's music playing all the time and we're cooking and eating. And, yeah. you know, that's what we do. And we're very lucky because we both do it together. We love to do it. There's not, 
you know, we're not with other people who are like, eh, you know, I, I've been sleeping, I, I, I've slept under consoles when people are mixing records. You know? We just love what we do. And um, he's a, he's, he probably looks as good as he does because he doesn't, he doesn't feel unhappy about what he's doing. You know, he loves his life. That's, uh, that's, that's fantastic. The, uh, um, Jared chimed in, said, uh, KM, uh, love, love them. Uh, love KMFDM. And, uh, <laughs> right on. <laughs> Sandra uh, said, girl power. Uh, can't wait to, to see you in Denver again. You rock. Yes, very soon. Hopefully, hopefully. And then, uh, yep, Richard had to chime in uh, one more time, too. Yeah, uh, horror is a great theme for that. Uh, like he said with Ash, usually the main uh, in a horror story goes through the massive trauma, kind of like the final girl, too, at, at the end of, of uh, a lot of these films. And if uh, you're trying to reach those people, it's a great metaphor. Well, I feel like the girl who's lived through a lot of trauma in the horror movie, so I think I could do it. I mean, I, like I said, it's all relative, right? All of our experiences, we're processing it through our own lens, our own perspective. Um, but I hope that even for somebody who's experienced something that is, God, you know, there's so many far worse things that people endure in their lives. I hope that this will somehow inject them with some kind of feeling that will be like, I can, you know, I'm not alone. I, you know, that yeah. the album is not about specifically surviving anything. It's like a roller coaster. It's sexy. It's hot. It's, yeah. oh, it's got moments of everything on it. And I think we all embody all of this. Um, so, I didn't want it to be like a sad sack record. It's not, it's, it's about everything I wanted to be. It's about overcoming shit. It's about yeah. like being in control and not being dead. Be, you know, it's about it all. Nice. And, and, and I think everybody has at some point in their life felt all those things. So um, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna like, have some creepy goosebumpy feels and you're also going to have some like throw down feels and you're going to cool. want to throw off your clothes and dance around in your underwear. And, <laughs> and then when it's all over, you're going to be like, Hmm. Have you been keeping an eye on me? What, what, are, what, are you, what else are you going to do during COVID? Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day is you're going to get through it. You know, you, you know, you're going to get through it. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Right. Um, as long as you got breath in your body and a will to survive yeah. and a dream in your heart, you can push through it. That, I'm, that's, you know, I'm still here. So you're still rocking it. That, I'm still yeah. rocking it. And I'm like, you know, I've been around a long time and I'm still not where I want to be, but who the fuck cares? Right. You got to keep on going. Right. Right. Most definitely. Uh, Lucia, you know, man, thanks so much for, for talking to us. Uh, real quick, do you have a, a release date for uh, the new album? I do. I, I can tell you, I, I want to tell you so much, but I can't tell you more than the release dates. I can okay. tell you that um, my first single is coming out on May 28th. May 28th. Nice. Yes. And there will be a second single sometime in June and the album arrives July 2nd, it will be coming through all, um, I'm gonna be releasing it with Metropolis Records, the same home of KMFDM's records. And, um, you know, it'll be released physically on CD and vinyl and all digital streaming services. Um, so it's gonna be really proper and readily available in all formats. Um, but I will be sharing artwork and track lists and stories, individual stories. I mean, you know, I've given you some great insight into it, but I'll tell you, I'll tell everybody more very soon, just as soon as I can. Um, Thank you so much for having me and letting me talk to you. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, this was, this was great. I, I, I absolutely love it. That's, that's why I do this. I, I love connecting with, with people and, you know, over a love of horror and art and music. I, it's, it's great. And, I think uh, you know, 
people really you know need tools like this to to connect because the world's kind of isolated uh, right now. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, thank thanks so much uh, for coming on the show. Um, yeah, just uh, if if you could, uh, uh, Lucia, just go ahead and uh, hang out for a second. Um, oh yeah. I'm just gonna put on my glasses to see what do you need me to do? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, yeah. Again, uh, thanks to you and uh, you know for coming on and uh, and to Sasha and uh, all the amazing you know art that you you guys give the world because you know it's it's greatly appreciated and, and well loved. I think. Thank you for listening. We appreciate it. Without you guys, we got nothing. So yeah. Appreciate it. And then to everybody that uh, that was able to tune in and uh, uh, to, uh, oh, let's see here, uh, to, to Richard especially and yeah, everybody perfect. that commented. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> thanks, thanks so much for, for participating in the broadcast. Uh, we love you guys. And then uh, thanks to uh, uh, Mutiny Information Cafe, uh, you know, for uh, uh, putting up with us, you know, yeah, if you're gonna start a revolution, make sure it's caffeinated. Uh, <laughs> Groovy TV and uh, for uh, yeah, Hellfire Entertainment for uh, you know broadcasting us, and then of course uh, our main sponsor, Alien Donut Films. Uh, thanks so much, guys, and uh, yeah, Angela and Bill over there, and then uh, my producers, uh, Stephen Santa Cruz and Amanda Armstrong. Th thanks so much, and uh, everybody in the world. Uh, you know, make sure you take care of each other, love each other, look out for each other, and uh, we'll we'll see you next time. Uh, take care. <laughs>